for me it gives strength to wear these um, traditional clothes. This, uh, this is made by the help of my mother and my aunt. And all of our clothes and symbols, like this uh, silver amulet, it's called Schilda. This is for protection. So I always wear this uh, either around my neck or in my, uh, in my belt as a protection. And I feel I get strength, the extra strength and energy. These are the animals that brought first human existence to this whole region. So these, um, these are the, the proper indigenous on this land, so to say. And then humans are second. It's always been our life. This is what my ancestors, all of my grandparents and both of my parents have always lived out of. And the reindeer is so central, like everything revolves around the well-being of the reindeers. The reindeer herding is also storing knowledge about uh, language. It's storing knowledge about um, climate understanding. Um, for instance, Sami reindeer herding is still uh, probably the most important element of keeping uh, Sami culture alive. As you point out, uh, a lot of my artwork uh, includes reindeers. That's just to say that this is my background and my heritage in an already um, fragile society. Because the Sami reindeer herders are a minority, so I feel a need to protect it. And, and it's very natural for me. The government in 2014 sent out a notification of um, forced cullings of our herds. The Sami people will definitely disappear or our culture will definitely die out if you design national laws that will kill it. I consider myself as um, a storyteller and in that process I use anything I can. So. It happened that I wrote books, it happened that I created installations. I never planned to be an artist or a writer. I just feel that something needs to be addressed and I'm sort of a medium. <laughs> Unfortunately, my inspiration uh, is very much connected to struggles. And these um, uh, art pieces are our life as well. You have to remember that these are the animals and these are, are, this is the energy of not only animals but it was sort of seeing the soul of ourselves piled up in this bloody mess. I feel so many things and I'm asking myself where did I find the strength? How can I stand outside of courthouses, outside of the Norwegian parliament, talk to the world with 400 reindeer heads shot in the head? It's just bagu, as we say in Sami. It's the fact that you have to. There is no other choice. Either we uh, lay down, sell our herd, do as the government says, but what do we have left? What do we do? This is not an option. So during the project and the trials, my energy comes from anger, from need, from rage. Because we're standing there and I know my brother is sitting in trial, protecting my rights along with his rights and my family's rights and the rights of our community. I do this to protect him, to help our community and to get a light in this darkness. Asking for strength, help and guidance from ancestors, from spirits, from the land, from everywhere. My grandmother has always been very important for me. So for me it's so important to know that even though they are past, they are still here with us. And I feel I am never alone as long as I ask them for help. And strength. Through art, I have a voice. The trend since the 1970s has been a negative 
propaganda from politicians and medias creating a, a public image of Sami reindeer herders as ecological villains and destroying the land. Their argumentation uh, for activating the forced cullings was that they are doing this to protect our land because our reindeers are supposedly destroying the land. I cannot um, sit by and let them destroy our land and slaughter our herds in the same saying. If you remove the means for survival, you will definitely get rid of the people for sure. But uh, the problem is that it's done so neatly by the use of a whole uh, fair democracy. You know, it's the manipulation, changing of laws and paragraphs and then you know, the, the, even our precious Sami parliament is uh, being used, in my opinion. So I saw the map of uh, the mining industry, all of the plans for mining. This was supposed to be the new economy for Norway, you know. Once the oil ends, the mining is next and all of the mines and uh, minerals are found up in the north. And then on top of that, this insanely um, forced culling and the methodology of how it was done, you know, stripping people um, from basic rights. I just felt that now this is going um, in such a dark place. So Pilosatmi happened because of the... <sighs> overwhelming hypocrisy of so many things and and the way that this system the Norwegian uh, democracy is ice cold and there's just this um, trend of um, neither listening to us or regarding us this is not right where is the Sami parliament where is the critical uh, media so what is left a slow death is what is left and then you don't have to take responsibility for anything because it will die naturally. So Pilosatmi is an artistic trial against the society which has failed us. No one talked about it, no one asked critical questions and there was no support for, uh, for the reindeer herders who were in this position because this is uh, uh, attacking not only my brother but so many in our society. So when my brother went to his first trial in 2016 I piled up 200 reindeer heads outside of the, the courthouse to gain attention and start the process of activating a critical debate. The goal of this project was sort of to dig up this rotten, rotten buried thing, you know, which still exists, coming from the long history of uh, assimilating the Samis and uh, how these new colonial uh, processes are still going on but hidden in this fair democracy. So this is uh, what the project very much is dealing with now. This is also a reason why I started this project, um, to claim a voice and to claim credibility, to be believed. It's a victory for all of us. It's a victory because it can no longer um, happen in silence and in hiding. It's as I said as well, it's like bringing the dirty laundry to um, the table. And we have uh, intellectual debates, like proper debates, where the Sami knowledge about reindeer herding, about land, about uh, climate, is also given value. It wasn't before. Pilosatmi is the title of my artwork. It is this pile of 200 reindeer heads, which is a reference to the story of uh, the Buffalo Massacres where the colonialists piled up millions of bison heads. The history of uh, Regina, uh, where it actually was a colonial strategy to massacre the buffaloes, to 
remove the indigenous population from the territory and get control over the indigenous population. And the indigenous people still refer to the area as pile of bones because that's what it became remembered for. It's a remain from the colonial period, you know, when, when they were assimilating the Samis brutally. So it's still not history. And I suppose that's very much what my artwork is about, you know. Another piece that I'm working on now, it's a project where I'm using the remains of the, the heads because these heads are also critique on how Western system, it's not sustainable in regards to uh, the climate and the area where we're living and compared to indigenous uh, philosophy and thinking. And we would never be allowed to, to throw away the entire head of an animal, you know, especially regarding that this is a cold climate uh, where things grow very slowly and there are few animals that are really, you know, adapted to survive in this region. And then having this kind of uh, relationship to your resources is quite sad. And for me now, uh, trying to take care of the remains of the head, uh, so I'm creating new art pieces from the jaws of the reindeer heads and I don't consider them junk still so I'm making this uh, this color that you saw this is also a close reference to the history of the pile of bones who then shipped them to Europe and made this uh, super exclusive uh, buffalo bone china that then was sold as a, a elite uh, product to rich Europeans so I made this huge neck piece for Documenta that I called the uh, Pilosami Power Necklace. I started going to um, Karasuandu on the Swedish side, buying, I think, 700 meters uh, of lasso. And I came home and I felt it was so poor and it had no soul, no energy, no history. So I ended up traveling around in the reindeer herding community and trading. When people had uh, destroyed old uh, lassos, if they had broken in any way, then I would trade. So that way, uh, these materials become personal stories of these people because the lasso is such um, important. It's one of the key tools, but it's so needed in in an everyday life in wild Arctic wilderness. So you use a lasso for anything, basically, for capture, for rescuing. It, you can even use it for killing, you know. It's such an um, essential uh, thing. You will almost never see a reindeer herder leave anywhere without his lasso and his dog. So this piece for me, yes, you can see this rope but also these are life stories and they have all belonged to a person who has been living in this nature in a symbiosis with animals, um, climate and every day, you know, trying to manage. So seeing the, these ropes hanging here is also a sign of a living culture and it's very important to connect our history, our stories, and our presence, and our voices. And this is what art is uh, a beautiful thing, because we can do that through art. I think that there is a crucial need in the, in the world to listen to indigenous um, voices uh, in terms of the climate situation, in terms of political uh, situation globally. There is a need of a shift in the way people think and the way people uh, regard the universe, the land and the coexistence of human beings around the globe. And this is where I feel uh, indigenous philosophy needs to speak to the world.
I haven't been the one who's up front there on the barricades, but I feel that there are so many others who have that role, that my role is to try to find ways how to promote Sami people's human rights. So I have chosen the law as my weapon. I think my engagement and my passion for law and the human rights advocacy comes from my childhood, growing up together with my grandparents and just um, learning from them and seeing all the injustice that my people have uh, been facing. I come from this society here in Guadagain, which is a majority Sami society. This is one of the few communities in the world where indigenous peoples are in a majority situation. But there are still these laws that are made by the national parliament that doesn't really take into account our traditions. And we have this hunting tradition in this village. We have the spring duck hunting, but we're not allowed to do it in the traditional way. And with this law that prohibits this kind of hunting, Many, especially young people, are really angry. And we have this young female artist here. She made this installation and put it outside the police office here in the village. And she also printed paragraph 108, which is our constitutional amendment that protects the rights of the Sami. So it was a protest. This is uh, her way of expressing the anger that many people feel here. So that's also one of the battles of the Sami people that want to keep up their traditional way of life. I think it's really, really important to have this kind of artist who really dare to speak up. So uh, there's where the Sami artist movement is such an important uh, contribution to the, to the fight for human rights in, in the Arctic. This voice gets so loud. It's not possible for Norwegian, Sweden and Finnish parliament to not listen. They ha have to listen to this. We see this new movement now coming with new young artists. I really think that contributes to the political discussions. And I think that is so in important and so inspiring also for me. And I think artists have a lot to offer. Uh, where lawyers don't, we don't have all the tools. Like we are good at working with uh, developing new laws and stuff like that. But, but the artists add to this by uh, making us remember where we come from. So I think that is so important that we never forget where we came from. I think it's very unique in our society that you have this close uh, connection between uh, artists and also politicians and lawyers working together. The whole installation outside the Norwegian parliament that Marha Nasara had during the, the Supreme Court hearings of her brother's case, just to see the, the skulls of the reindeer outside our parliament building, the building where they make laws in this country. And people can relate to that because they can feel the injustice that she's feeling. That was such a very strong message. So I think that the Samis will survive as a people as long as we have this creative powers and we also have the strong political movement. <laughs>